so you need your floor flat before you can tile over it. So this video is going to show the process that I use to flatten this particular small bathroom floor. So the floor was already pretty flat throughout, except for the area where the toilet sits, and it was diving down in the back. So you can see here that the floor isn't quite flat, and the other side is actually a little bit worse. So first, I want to make sure the floor is clean enough that I can bond to it. So a belt sander isn't really the best tool for this, but it's what I had in my van, so that's what I'm using. So next I'm sponging off any dust material and making sure that the floor is clean and just a bit damp. So this is the product that I'm using to flatten the floor. It's called Silk from Custom Building Products. And you can also use a product from Home Depot called Henry's Feather Finish, which is similar to Artix Feather Finish as Artix owns Henry's. And also you can use a product called Plana Patch from Mape. And you can pick that up at Lowe's or Floor and Decor. So now I'm mixing up a little bit. And if you're pro watching this and you don't have a bucket that looks like this, I just don't think you're serious about your trade. So now I'm putting two spots in the back corners. And then I'm taking my straight edge and I'm flattening down the spot so that it's on the same plane as the rest of the floor. Then I do the other side. And I'm scraping the edges off so they're not higher than the middle part that I just flattened. So now these feather finish products are fast setting and should be dry within 30 minutes. So now that the two spots are dry, I'm mixing more of the same product and placing it between the two dots. Dampen the straight edge and run it off the two spots so that you have a track going across the back. Now I'm making another track that comes out all the way to where the floor is flat. Same on the other side. Now take your straight edge and place it on the hard dot in the corner and scrape your patch material down so that it's flat. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the excess off the straight edge and I'm placing it in the middle. I could put it back in the bucket and throw it away, but it's just a waste of material and the middle is going to get filled up eventually anyway. Now do the other side. Again, scraping the excess in the middle. So now I'm cutting off the high edges so they're not higher than the tracks I made. And I'm just placing the excess in the middle and making sure that it's lower than the tracks. Then I'm going to let the tracks dry. So now that the tracks are dry, I'm just mixing in more and filling in around the back. So I'm going to speed this part up because uh, you get the idea. So I'm filling in the edges around and troweling them flat. And then I fill in the middle with more patching material all the way out to the flat part of the floor. And I take my straight edge and run it on the two tracks. And then fill in any low spots and do it again. And so now I'm just troweling the material flat and making sure that it's smooth. And then one final check. I grab my straight edge now and I'm placing it on the tracks and making sure there are no lower high spots. And that's it. So here's the next day and everything is completely dry and you can see that it's pretty good. Definitely better than before. And so that's one way of getting a floor flat.
Hopefully that's helpful. Let me know in the comments.